Now we are going to move on to our last speed talk um, from Phil Atkin, who in the Halloween spirit is going to be talking to us about the Pipistrelle family of bat detectors that he's been developing, which was the inspiration behind the graphic design of this month's Variety Hour. So Phil, it's all yours. So yeah, I will be talking very, very quickly about the Pipistrelle family of uh, bat detectors and recorders, uh, which kind of came out of nowhere from my perspective. So in 2021, I accidentally became a bat person and became a bat acoustics person. We moved house in March. Um, by April, we decided we really wanted to do something that was locally engaged. So my wife and I both volunteered to be surveyors for the Bats and Churches project. Having decided I was going to become involved in bats, I figured I just had to design my own bat detector. So in exactly two weeks, I got all the software running and lashed up the hardware. Clearly, something like this was never going to work on the road, so I decided to turn that into a printed circuit board. Um, and while that was happening, uh, we started to survey churches. Now, for the first time, I had a full-spectrum bat recorder in my hand, uh, and I had two, two immediate responses to that. One was, this is the coolest thing ever. You can record bats with it. The other was, oh, my God, it's 350 quid. I can do one of those for 20 quid. Hold my beer. So I kicked off. On um, yeah, initial detector, two weeks. I'm now three and a half years in, but I think I finally got something that uh, that I'm happy with. Um, the electronics has all moved to the back surface. There's a, pre a 3D printed case that everything works in, and these are now actually available commercially. I don't make any money from these. All my take goes to charity, uh, so I'm not here. I'm not here, kind of uh, trying to earn money. Pipistrel 5.6, I think we're at, uh, is paired with PPG 3.6. PPG is a Pipistrel without the bat detector, so it's just a full spectrum recorder. Honestly, it's a Poundland Audio Moth, if any of you know Audio Moth, and it came out of a conversation with the Bat Conservation Trust during the great silicon sh shortage of 2022, where somebody said to me, You can't buy an Audio Moth and you won't be able to for about 12 months. Why don't you just design an Audio Moth? So I did. Uh, they require an app to. Uh, oh, hang on, I missed a transition there. Let me let me go back. Yeah, so they require an app to set up recording. So sleep time, wake time, uh, duration of recording, set up with this app, which I wrote. Um, having got back into writing apps, I thought, you know, I may as well write a bat detector app. So I wrote a bat detector app. This was a couple of months ago. Um, but since my goal is to get everything as cheap as possible. Uh, this needed to have a really cheap USB microphone to go with it. So given that the innards of Pipistrelle and PPG could operate just fine as a USB microphone, I've done this. Uh, and I'm actually wearing, I'm wearing my Griff USB microphone as, as a badge. So it's a 384 kilohertz USB microphone. You can build it at home for 10 quid. Uh, you can build a Pipistrelle at home for about 20. You can build a PPG at home for about 17. So that turns into like between $25 for the Pipistrel and maybe $15 for the for the USB microphone. So incredibly cheap. You can buy PPG and Pipistrel commercially, um, 40 pounds pre-assembled from a, a third party company, Smith Robotics. Uh, where did I go next with this presentation? Yeah. So hold on, Phil. Why were there so many iterations of Pipistrel? <laughs> you know, was there a problem? So my my feeling, you know, back at this point, you know, you're thinking, I have I have solved the world's I have solved the world's bat acoustics problems. I've developed the most affordable recorder, the most affordable detector, the most affordable USB microphone. Brilliant. Sadly not, because uh, I had this problem I could not get rid of, which is my recordings had noise on them, which was clearly, if you look at the interval between these little spikes, the noise was clearly associated with the SD card and writing data to the SD card. So these little spikes here, which manifest as a grinding noise on the recordings, are at exactly 16 kilobyte intervals from a recording perspective. These things are some more macroscopic um, artifacts, but they're all associated with the SD card. The reason being that the SD card takes a ton of current when you start writing to it that disturbs the power supplies, disturbs the ground uh, reference level, and 
that those uh, insertions of noise into the system then become noise on the recordings. This this was the thinking. So um, the way you defend against these kind of issues electrically is you decouple. So you throw lots of capacitors all over the board to try and stabilize the supply as much as possible. And clearly, I did stabilize the supply as much as possible, and this recording noise didn't go away. So quite what was going on. And a chance conversation with uh, Alex uh, at AudioMoth on Twitter led to this scales falling from my eyes revelation, which is he said to me, do you know that SD cards generate ultrasound when you write to them? They operate as piezoelectric speakers. I thought, oh, you know, bugger. All this time I've been chasing what was an electrical problem and it's an acoustic problem. So the way you solve that is just to move the microphone away from the SD card, separate the card into two parts. And I, I only took a few days to put this design together, send off the designs to China, get the hardware back. Everything works brilliantly. Once again, I have clearly solved all the world's bat detection problems. Uh, and I was so pleased I presented it to the Wild Labs community. Uh, and this was, so point to note, I've spoken, I'm not an electronics designer. Uh, so all of this was me grubbing around in the dark. And I'd spoken to electronics people and I'd spoken to ecologists, but I'd never actually managed to, to engage successfully with the bioacoustics community. Within about half an hour of getting onto the Wild Loves community, I had engaged with the bioacoustics community. And uh, Harold Tay, thank you, Harold sent this message saying, are you quite sure that it's the SD card and it isn't the capacitors that you've used? So my defense against electrical noise was to put lots more capacitors onto the circuit board. It transpires that those capacitors are much louder piezoelectric speakers than the SD card. Uh, and I've been barking up the wrong tree for like two and a half years. So wasn't Agatha all along, it was the capacitors all along. So replacing the capacitors with a different type of capacitor changed everything. There are two different types of capacitor you have to, have to use. Big capacitors go to polymer tents, little ones go to something I can't even pronounce. And hey presto, the standard PPG now makes recordings which are as clean as the separated microphone version. And here's a before and after. Now, there's generally a swish of noise here the noise is much lower here, but the key thing, the absolute key thing is these clunking artifacts have entirely disappeared. And those clunking artifacts are a gigantic problem because they can be mistaken for bats by automated classifiers. And there's nothing worse than having your bat recorder generating artificial bats as an artifact and then clogging up the databases of, of classifiers. Um, with bad readings. So we've now reached the point, we, I, after three and a half years, we've reached the point where these devices really do make good enough recordings. They're on par with audio moth. They're never going to compete with your thousand dollar recordings. But you can build something at home for 20 quid, which which you can then deploy all over the place. And I've got, you know, the researchers in Spain with 70 of these things in the field that, that their ecologists have hand assembled, stuck into ovens, baked up, uh, and are sampling bats um, in the mountains of northern Spain. Uh, and there we are. It was I was wrong all along. It was the capacitors. Thank you, Wild Labs community. And thank you all for listening. Thank you so much for that presentation. I was so excited to invite you onto this Friday Hour one because of the bats, but also because I was sort of watching in real time between your LinkedIn and your posts on Wild Labs, <laughs> conversations all happening. And that is at the heart of what we do. And it was so exciting to essentially watch it happen in real time. And he's putting on the hat and the hat is awesome. Um, we're a little bit over time. So I'm going to put questions in the chat for you because I'd certainly okay. have some about bats in churches and whatnot. Um, and it seems like there, we have some more questions um, flowing into the chat right now. Um, so feel free to go answer those in there.